Well hello there once again, Cool Dude Clem here with a video about computers. And this is a bit of a sad day because Franken PC is no more. It's amazing how quickly something can go from perfectly working to not working at all. Now, I was using this computer earlier, making some music on it, and the song I was making wasn't going so well, so I decided to turn it off and come back to it later. So I was just sitting on my bed, minding my own business, when all of a sudden I heard something go pop in here, followed by a faint buzzing in the speakers. So I unplugged this and took it apart to see if I could see if there was any visible sign of what went wrong. And my first suspicion, which turned out to be absolutely right, was the power supply. So you can see here the power supply that I've opened up carefully. Now, hopefully everything will stay in shot while I'm doing this. So here we see the power supply, or the guts of the power supply. My first suspicion was that one or maybe all of the switching transistors had gone bad. So I decided to test to see if they've gone short-circuited. So I pulled out the two main capacitors, which are here so I could get to the transistors on the power supply and I went through with my meter to see if they're short circuited anywhere and they're not so all three of these transistors have tested OK well short circuit wise however with the rectifiers which are on the other side of the power supply it's a completely different story so on this side of the board I don't know how well you can see that but we've got three rectifiers, there's one there, one there, and behind this coil there's one there. And I'm getting an unusually low resistance when I measured between the cathode and the anode of each of these rectifiers. For instance, with this one on the end here, when I measured between the anodes and the cathode, I got a very low resistance of about 14 ohms, which is not what it's supposed to be. And we should get a low resistance at first, but then it should start going up as the capacitors charge. And yes, I know I was testing these while they were in the circuit, but there's absolutely just no way I can get those out. So there is definitely something going on. I don't need to take these out of the circuit to confirm that something has gone wrong with those rectifiers. And unfortunately, I cannot get them out at all because, well, you can see the way this heat sink is shaped. And also... These coils are in the way, which makes this thing totally non-service friendly. Now, while I could put a new power supply in this thing, I really don't think that's going to be a good idea because this wouldn't be the first time I've had to replace the power supply in this thing. I mean, this thing has now gone through two power supplies, so I think something in this motherboard is killing power supplies. So. There is just no point in putting another power supply in if it's just going to go a few months later. So this is going to be Franken PC's replacement. This little tiny computer here, which is oceans more powerful than Franken PC could ever imagine. The only trouble with it is that there are no PS2 ports, so I cannot use my PS2 keyboard and my PS2 mouse. Also, there's no firewire, so, but I don't really use that anyway. And also, there is no video capture on this thing. I mean, I got a nice video capture card in Franken PC, which I got back in 2004, and that still works like a charm, but I could replace that with a USB capture card, no problem. The only other real issue is that there is no VGA on the output of this thing. We've got DVI, for, um, Ethernet, audio, power, and USBs, but... No VGA, only DVI, so I'm sure I've got a DVI cable floating around somewhere. However, I know this does work because I put Franken PC's hard drive in here, turned it on, computer powers up, and I hoped it would boot from that hard drive. That way I wouldn't have to reinstall Windows, but nope, it's not having that. Blue screened even before it got to the Windows XP splash screen, so yeah, I'm gonna have to reinstall Windows and also. This thing does seem to run a little bit hot, so I'm going to do some... I'm going to change these fans on here, so instead of blowing out, they blow in. And hopefully that will make it a bit, run a little bit cooler. Anyway, there we go. That is Franken PC's replacement. 
So, as a temporary solution for editing my videos, I'm going to be editing the next few videos on my gaming computer, because, as you probably know, this has got Windows 7 and Windows XP on it, so I can run Adobe Premiere, which is what you're seeing right now. So, this is the actual software I use to edit my videos on. And right here we've got, well, a video being edited as we speak. The only issues I've got with this is that on this computer it does seem to take longer to render videos even though this computer is a lot more powerful and I'm using the exact same settings as I was using on Franken PC so that is kind of weird. I don't know why it takes longer to render videos on this computer when this computer is infinitely more powerful but still. Also another issue with this is that well Sitting back here, everything does look really small. And I have to have it at this resolution because this 1280 by 1024 is what Adobe Premiere really runs, well, really looks best at. That way everything seems to fit on the screen just nicely. However, if we zoom in, you can see that there is this... I don't know if you can see that. It looks... Um, just try to stabilise the camera a bit. be able to see that the picture, especially around here, it's got this really nasty shimmer to it, and that's really, I, you know, I cannot look at that for too long. So, anyway, if you want to see a video about me setting all this up and running into tons of problems like I almost certainly will, then leave a comment and I'll make a video about all that and uh, get that up on YouTube and, well, you know. Anyway, that's it for now, so until next time, goodbye.